Uh, okay, good afternoon. So we continue the lesson. Uh, that the last lesson was a very long lesson. You have to be a little bit patient so that we can finalize these things. So, uh, first of all, I want to talk about this word. In Swedish, probably you use the similar word to the English derivative. Uh, but I want to use this word, which is more common. So this is differentiation. The process of going from a function to its derivative is called differentiation. The final product that you have it in your hand after doing this is called the derivative. So the derivative is the product of differentiation. Yes. So the process taking you, so, so if you have a function, so now I will use this word when I want to communicate in the exam or something. So if you have a function f, when you go from your function f to your function f prime, this process is called differentiation. If I ask, if I want to ask you to go from here to here, I would say differentiate the following functions. And this final product is called the derivative. So now our lesson uh, what that we started from last session is that how I can go from the function f to its derivative. The answer is extremely simple, but it is formidable and tedious. So if I give you a function f, if I ask you to find f prime, there is only one way for you to do it, to use the uh, definition of the derivative. And I told you that the only thing that I have ch made a change here, I changed the letter A to letter X. That's it. And by giving you some examples, I try to motivate you that if you want to follow this crude definition of derivative all the time, it becomes really boring and tedious. Okay? And if you want to change the uh, function a little bit, you have to redo it all over again. Because of these problems, technical problems or practical problems, we try to do it in a little bit more efficiently. The first thing that we did, we tried to categorize our functions that we work in mathematics to different categories and then try to find a formula for each category, either memorize them or tabulate them which of course you don't need to memorize, you will get it in the formula sheet and then use them to find your derivatives, okay? So that is the strategy. And then we manage only to uh, do two, fun two types of functions. Do you remember what was that? I want to increase this table little by li little during this course. So if a function f of x and then I have f prime of x. So if I ask you, if what is the simplest possible function? It is the constant function. f of x goes to a constant number. For example, f of x equals to square root of 2 is a constant function. What does it mean? It means regardless of the input, the output is always square root of 2. So if you are facing such a constant function, its derivative is 0. Yes? And then we also learned something. This took most part of the lesson last session to convince you a little bit because I was not able to prove it in a very rigorous mathematical way because you do not have enough math knowledge for the time being, I try to motivate you that if I give you x to some power, what that power is doesn't matter, any number, the derivative of this a goes down, then x to the power of a one unit less is the derivative. Okay, and I change my color now. There are some special cases that I want to pay more attention to. One special case of this, so let me write only here. If I choose a to be 1, then my function is x. Okay, 1, which is a, goes down, and then 1 minus 1, 0, x to power 0 is 1, so the derivative becomes 1. I really want you to have this in your memory. The derivative of your variable becomes 1, if that is the identity function. Another special case is that what happens if I have 1 over x? So if I ask you to uh, differentiate 1 over x, you should do it in this way. If you don't have it in your memory, these red ones are not included in the formula sheet. So 1 over x can be written as x to power minus 1. 
and then I can use this formula, which is in the formula sheet, to calculate the derivative of that. How should I do that? According to this rule, the exponent goes down, the exponent goes down, and multiplied itself by x to power, the same power, but one unit less. The same power minus one. And then you calculate it, it becomes minus one, multiplied by x to power minus two, but x to power minus 2 can be written as 1 over x to power positive 2. And then minus 1 times that is just minus 1 over x squared. So I mean that if you do not have this in your memory, it is not straight, but you can just still do it. But it takes time, okay? So I would prefer to have the, I, I myself have these them separately in my memory. Another very important case is what happens if I have a square root of x. So if a square root of x, I have it, I have to write it as x to power 1 half first. And then you see this expression is similar to this one. Here, a is 1 half. So if I ask you to differentiate this function, you have to do that. You bring 1 half down. You write x to power 1 half, but 1 unit less. And then it becomes 1 half. x to the power of 1 half minus 1 is minus a half. That is okay, you can just leave it like this because the differentiation process is finished here, exactly like here, the differentiation process is finished here. The rest of it is simplification, which is also needed to, to do. So then I would do take this one to the denominator, make the exponent positive, and then x to power 1 half is a more tangible name for us. Instead of x to power 1 half, it is easier for our brain to work with the square root sign because we have probably used to it. And then 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times this becomes 2 square root of x. So this is why I also recommend you to have this in your memory. If you don't, you have to do this process every time. So this becomes 1 over 2 square root of x. So the reason that I changed my color here because these formulas are not new formulas. These are just one single formula expressed for different famous functions. Yes? So that is what we learned uh, very shortly last time. Any questions so far? Okay, so now, uh, before continuing, let me give you uh, one or two examples, and then I want to teach you the new lesson. So, for example, differentiate the following function. So now you are learning this word, yes? Differentiate. Sorry, can I just follow your task? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, differentiate the following functions. Okay, so let me write this. For example, f of x is equal to, uh, I don't know, let me write x to the power of minus 3. So if I ask you to differentiate this one, what do you write? First of all, is there any formula in your table which is suitable for this function? The answer is yes. If you compare this, you will find it in the second row, yes? And then you need to realize that that is the same function. What is, uh, what is playing the role of a here in this problem? Minus 3. So you just go and put the formula in front of you and then use it. So minus 3 goes down and then you write x. You have the same power but one unit less. And then you calculate it. This becomes minus 3 x to power minus 4. This is the end of the process. I will not simplify it because they gave it with negative power, so I don't bother to write it with positive power. But it doesn't hurt if you want to do that. Okay. What about this function? For example, I have 3. F, let me change the name of the function every time. So g of x, uh, let me write it as a 1 over x to the power of 5. 
So if I ask you to differentiate this, in this form, I cannot find it on the left side on my table, yes? Because I only know how to do these functions, okay? But this is 1 over x to power 5. 1 over x to power 5 does not appear there, yes? But it is easy to change the form of this function into a form that I can see it in my table. So that is the skill that you need to learn, okay? So what should I do? What should I do? So I would say, let me, this, the red one is the solution. So g of x is equal to what? I bring this up, it becomes x to power what? Minus 5. So there is no difference between this x to power minus 5 and 1 over x to power 5 based on by our previous knowledge. But the good point is that now I can see this in my table. If I give the rule of a to minus 5, this becomes the second row. So then, so what you need to write, don't uh, forget to put the prime. So g prime of x is equal to minus 5 goes down, x to the power of minus 5, but one unit less. So it becomes minus 5 x to power minus 6. Here, I prefer to write it with positive power because it was given me with positive power. But to be honest, that is not a big deal. You can stop there. Differentiation process is finished. So what I do, I would say that this means that j prime of x is equal to minus 5 over x to power 6. If I ask you what is this, you should say this is the derivative. What I am doing here, I am differentiating. I am differentiating g of x, these red lines, and the final product is called the derivative. Yes? What about this one? Oh, I don't know why I jumped to 3. So I'm losing my memory. So uh, now 3. So let me write the function h of x. So you see, I am changing the name of the function. I hope that this is not disturbing you, okay? So let me write this. x times the third root of x squared. I want to differentiate this function. So what should I do? In this form, which is not useful because I do not see this combination somewhere on the left column. So I have to change the form of the given function so that I can use these informations here. And that is hopefully easy now. What should I do? As fraction powers. Yes, so what I do is, this is the solution. H of x, you see I haven't written h prime of x yet. I haven't started using the table so far. So it's still it is h of x. x multiplied by another way of writing this is x to power 2 thirds. So let me write these two here. These formulas will be very handy. I hope that you memorize them. So if I give you the nth root of something, this is a to power 1 over n. And if I give you the nth root of a to power m, this is a to power m over n. So, and then let me also write the square root of a. When I write the square root of a, I mean that n is 2. When n is 2, I don't bother to write it down. So according to this formula, it becomes a to power 1 over 2. Anyway, so write it somewhere so that you can find that easily. Okay, so I use this. I use the middle one. Here, x is playing the role of a, 2 is playing the role of m, 3 is playing the role of n. So, I wrote x to the power of m over n, 2 over 3. Okay, but this is not still enough, because this is a product of two functions. I do not have any product of functions here, so I have to continue if possible. Otherwise, I will not be able to use that. But this is easy. Why? Because this, and I, these, are, these expressions are being multiplied, so I put x. So the, the, the exponent here, which is not written, is 1 in my head. And then I add the exponents. 
Yes, so this becomes one plus two third. And if you simplify that, it becomes x to the power of three over three plus two third. So this becomes x to the power of five over three. So look, I haven't done uh, differentiation yet. What I have been busy for, I was just trying to change the form of my function and now I succeeded here. Now, this is the time and go, I go here and use this formula because this is playing the role of that A in the second line. So what is that? H prime of X. This is differentiation process now. H prime of X, 5 over 3 goes down and then X to the power of 5 over 3 but minus 1. And this is compulsory to simplify that. So what should I do? This becomes 5 over 3 x to power 5 over 3 minus 1. Instead of 1, I write 3 over 3, subtract them, becomes 2 thirds. If you stop here, that is okay for me, but it is better to be able to write it back in the form of uh, third signs. Yes, it is better because you started with the third form using this root sign. It's better to rewrite it back in the root form. So 5 over 3, and then what do I have? x to power, the, the third root of x to power 2. Is that clear? Okay. But for the time being, if I ask you, if I give you this function, for example, s of x later, if I give you x to the power of 3 plus x to power 2, we still don't know. Because if I ask you, do you know the derivative of this part? The answer is yes. Do you know the derivative of that part? The answer is yes. But there is no guarantee that the derivative of the sum we know. Okay? So I want to talk about two rules here. Uh, because it is not mentioned in the book, but they are using it all the time. I want you to understand that. But if you don't like to understand deeper, you just can follow later how to do it. So, I want to answer two rules, because there are two more rules that will, you will learn in Math 4, not in Math 3. So, one rule that I want to teach you now is this. If I have a function f of x and you multiply it by a constant c, it becomes a new function. And if I ask you to differentiate this, the rule tells you that don't worry about this constant. Just take the derivative of the function after you found the derivative of this function part and multiply it by c later. Okay? I don't know. For some reason, the book has taken it for granted. But there is no guarantee for that. We need to convince ourselves about this. So this is rule number one. These rules are different from those rules. This rule is for any function, f of x. But this, these rules are only for these functions exactly, okay? This rule doesn't talk about the f of x. f of x is whatever you like. So number two, if I have two functions f of x plus another function, and then I want to take the derivative of the sum, I want to differentiate a sum. The rule tells me that you can do them separately. So you can take the, the derivative of the first one, you differentiate the first one, you differentiate the second one, and then you add them. So for simplicity, I call it addition rule, okay? And the same thing similarly is for subtraction. So f of x minus g of x if I ask you to differentiate the difference, you can different, uh, differentiate them separately. You differentiate the first one, you differentiate the second one, 
because you are supposed to subtract here, you also subtract here. So I will call it subtraction rule, okay? I'm forgetting about to write there. So in principle, you have to write the addition rule, the subtraction rule, okay? These rules are not obvious, by the way. The reason that I am saying this is not obvious, let me write another one. What is your impression? Might be you get this impression that if I have the product of two functions and I want to differentiate the result, might be you push this analogy more than needed, yes, more than is correct, you might conclude that the answer is the derivative of the first one multiplied by the derivative of the second. Okay? So this is not that easy. So I want you to write it and cross it over. You see, you might get this impression that f of x plus g of x prime is f prime plus g prime, f minus g prime is f prime minus g prime. So why not f times g prime is f prime times g prime? But that's not the case. And the same thing here. If you have f of x over g of x prime, if you think that this might be the case, that this is f prime g prime, this is also good to write and cross it over. These two we will study in math 4. That's very strange because I don't know why. When you teach derivative, it's better to teach everything. Okay. So anyway, these are the rules. Okay. I have to convince you why these rules are actually working, yes? Maybe I'm jumping a bit ahead, but were you going to explain why it is, it is that way, that you cannot multiply? Um, no, I cannot explain it at this level. Yeah, Because if I want to explain it at this level, I have to be able to do it properly so that you know the correct answer and do it in that way, you see that you are not getting the right answer. Because we haven't studied the proper way of doing it, I cannot expose it to you. But I'm just trying to make sure that you are, for example, if I give you x to the power of 2 times x to the power of 3, if I ask you to differentiate this, if you differentiate x squared and write 2x, if you differentiate x to the power of 3, and might be that's a good idea, okay? If you do it like this, yes? Because if I ask you what is the derivative of this one, you can use the second row and write it like this yes and if i ask you what's the derivative of this this is this and then if you multiply them what is the answer the answer is 6x to the power of 3 but on the other hand if i ask you what is another name for x2 times x3 what's the another name is x to power 5 and then if you use that formula the answer becomes 5x to the power of 4 and these two are not equal. Okay, you might say which one is correct. Hopefully you agree with me this one is correct. Because this is definitely equal to this one and the derivative of this one is that one. But if you naively use this rule, which is not correct, you might get this answer which is wrong. Okay? So don't use it. The proper way, I can write the proper form of course. It's not something secret. But... The rule is more complicated than that. So the rule is the derivative of the first one multiplied by the second one itself plus the first one multiplied by the derivative of the second one itself. So that's the correct form. But we are not going to read this. The correct form of this is more even complicated. This becomes f prime of x times g of x minus f of x times g prime of x divided by g of x to the power of 2. Okay, so the formulas are these formulas. But this is not the topic of our lesson in Math 3C, so don't worry. But what I want you to understand is don't use it. These crossed overs are wrong. The correct forms are these green ones. Uh, yes, is that clear? Okay, so the, the thing that I want to do, I want to explain why these rules are correct somehow, and then I will give you one lengthy example to consider different cases, and then the lesson will be finalized, okay? But of course, it takes a long time, I think. So why the formula is correct? 
uh, let us, for example, have this formula. Why do you think this rule is correct? If I have a function multiplied by a constant, and I want to see that if I take the derivative, I don't even care about the constant. I just write it there and only take the derivative of my function and multiply it. Okay, so what should I do? Uh, this is not important if you don't like to understand deeper. But I want to show you because this is at the right level of your knowledge, but probably you don't need to learn it if you don't like it. So what I say, I would say that let me write g of x. I introduce a new function, which is c times f of x. My goal is to take the derivative of that. Okay? I just call this a new function, and I ask myself, what is g prime of x? I want to convince myself that the answer to the question mark is c times f prime of x. Do you understand the logic? My logic, I, I want to prove this formula. So what I did, I called this one g of x. And I want to show that g prime of x is this one claimed there. Yes? Is the logic clear? Okay. So what should I do? I want to calculate the derivative of g. But the derivative of g has only one definition. This is the limit of g of x plus h minus g of x over h, h goes to 0. Agree? So if I ask you what can you write, I want you to help me to do this. If I ask you what can I write, so I'm just copying and pasting these parts that are trivial. Okay, what can I write about g of x? It is simple. g of x is the name I gave to this guy, so when needed, I replace it with what I gave it the name. So this becomes c f of x. But this, I want you to tell me what should I write instead of this. What should I write instead of this? Exactly. C of f of x plus h. Yes. Why is that? Because g takes me an input, takes my x, gives that x to f, f gives you an output, and then it multiplies by c, give it back to me. So now I have changed my input from x to x plus h. So this will do the same thing for me. But then between these two, I can factor a constant c out, yes? So sorry, h goes to 0. So then it becomes the limit. I factor c out. So if you don't mind, let me write c here. And then I put this dot here. And then I have f of x plus h minus f of x, h. h goes to 0. But h goes to 0 doesn't affect this part. Because this is a constant independent of h. So this means that I can pull c out and multiply it by the limit of this part only. Yes? So this constant, I can pull it out. Because when I am doing this limit process, I will not touch this part. Because I am sending h to 0. This is a constant, does not depend to my h. So when I send h to 0, I am not affecting this part. So it doesn't matter if I multiply it here and then send h to 0, or I send h to 0 and then multiply it by c. The results will be the same. But now if I ask you, do you, do you think this is something familiar to your eyes? Yes, that is the definition of a derivative. But for which function? For f. So c is already here, and then that is nothing except f prime of x. So I succeeded to show that the derivative of this function, which was the name I gave to this combination, is equal to c unaffected multiplied by the derivative of the function. So from now on, we can use this rule. Why this rule is good? Because if I give you this function, 5x to power 3, can you differentiate it now? Yes. Why? Because this is a constant. Could you differentiate this before? Yes, by the second uh, rule. Now, the function that you know how to differentiate is multiplied by a constant. Can I differentiate it now? Yes, because I know the rule. 
This is the root. Yes? So if I ask you what is the derivative of this function, you will tell me that, okay, because this is a multiplicative constant, I do not touch it. I concentrate my energy on taking the derivative here. But I already know what is the derivative there. What is that? 3 goes down. x to power what? 2. But of course, no one writes it like this because 5 times 3 times x squared has a better name. Yes? And of course, I really want you to go in one step, not two steps. But I want you to understand this is two steps, not one step. But it is better to do it in one step quickly. Okay? So that's one thing. Another thing I also want to convince you about this, you can convince yourself about this one as well. This is a little bit more complicated, but it will be fun for the students who are, want to understand deeper. So how should I prove this formula, addition rule? So let me call f of x plus g of x a new function. So let me call it s of x. Okay, I want to know the derivative of this for simplicity of writing and understanding, I give it a name. And then I want to convince myself that if I take the derivative of S, it is equal to the derivative of F plus the derivative of G. If I can prove this for you, then it means that from now on I am allowed to use this rule as well. Okay, so let us just do that. Okay, now can you help me? What should I do? I want to test your understanding. You want to prove this. Where do you start? What should I do? Yes, exactly. What should I write first? So S prime of X is equal to what? I have to write a definition. The limit of? S of X minus H. Minus? S of x divided by h goes to 0. Yes, that's exactly the case. This is the starting point, yes? Because I want to differentiate s, so I, this is the natural starting point. Now, I have to start uh, fine-tuning this according to my problem. S of x is extremely simple. Because s of x is the name I gave to this sum. So if you don't mind, let me just do the simple part first. So this minus sign I put here. And then I open a pair of brackets. Instead of S of X, I put this in. Understandable. But now, can you help me to write the first missing part? Anyone wants to try? What should I write instead of S of X plus H? This is your S of X. Agree? Everyone? Yeah, okay. So I have to replace my inputs with the new input. So this f of x becomes f of x plus h plus g of x plus h. So if you want, I can put a pair of brackets around these two, but it's not necessary. But be careful. This minus sign behind the pair of brackets goes for the first one and for the second one. So let me just do a simple algebra here. So this is f of x plus h plus g of x plus h minus f of x minus g of x and then divide it by h i know what i am going to prove so it means that if prime x g prime x should be in front of my eyes somehow yes and this is possible if you just to rearrange them so you go and take this with that and this with that yes so what I do, this becomes the limit of f of x plus h minus f of x plus g of x plus h minus g of x all over divided by h. h goes to 0. But hopefully you can see what I can do, yes? I can write it as the limit. I can decompose this one single fraction into two fractions, yes? I can take this part and then divide it by h, plus I can take this part and then divide it by h. I want to write them separately. You might say why, but you need to wait to see why this is useful. I hope that you can immediately see why this is really useful. Plus g of x 
plus h minus g of x over h, the whole thing, h goes to 0. Yes? So I have the limit of this plus the limit of this. Based on knowledge you learn in limits, I can write the limit of the first one plus the limit of the second one. So this becomes the limit of the first one h goes to 0 plus the limit of the second one h goes to 0 but I hope that you agree what's happening if I ask you what can I write for all this part what can I write this is just f prime of x plus what is this one g prime of x so this becomes f prime of x plus g prime of x so I was able to show that S prime of X is exactly F prime of X plus G prime of X. And hopefully you realize why the product rule is so complicated. I don't want to go through the details, but I want you to feel why this part suddenly becomes complicated. Can you feel that? Because if I want to start doing this, what will happen at this level? S of X, I will define it as F times G. And when I write this, that is completely the same. But what will happen here, this becomes product. This also becomes product. And then making them into group corresponding groups becomes harder. Yes, because then I will have f of x plus h times g of x plus h. Yes, minus f of x times g of x. In this case, I was able to move the f of x and put it next to this, and g of x put it next to this. But here I cannot take g f of x and move it next to f of x because they are combined together. So that is why the product rule is more complicated than you might anticipate in the beginning. But that's not our lesson. Is that clear? Okay, so from now on, I want to give... Now first, let me give you an example that you can use this rule. That's a very simple one. You can forget about these things if you don't like to learn them, okay? But here, if I give you, for example, f of x is equal to x to power 2 plus x to power 3, can I differentiate it? I can differentiate it now. Because if I ask you, do you know how to differentiate this part, the answer is yes. Do you know how to differentiate this part? The answer is yes, both of them are this rule. And then this is the sum. So if I want to write it, I want you to learn it in this way. Think in this way, but if you want, write it more quickly. Okay? So if you want to differentiate this, first you need to invoke, you need to summon this, uh, this rule. So what you say, you say that this is the derivative of the first part plus the derivative of the second function or second part. I don't expect you to write this part in the exam, but I expect you to think this part. Okay? So then what happens? Can you tell me what's the answer to the first part? 2x. Two X. Plus, what's the answer to the second part? 3x squared. Yes? Okay, now this is what I want to do today. I want to make an example, which is an extremely important example, especially for the exam, national exam. I want to try to combine these rules in different functions so that you can improve your skills how to use them. Okay, so that is the target of this example that I want to mention. Okay, so differentiate the following function. So let me put a star here. So this is probably the very important example. Not hard, but practically important. So example, differentiate the following functions. So number one, let me start with a very simple one. Let me start with the polynomial. 2x to the power of 5 
minus 3x to the power of 2 plus 5. I want to differentiate. Uh, by the way, when I solve the problem, I write all the details. Okay, but you don't need to write all the details and it is better not to write it, to do it correctly. Because then in math 4, you will see that if you want to write all the details, probably you will not ever be able to finish the problem. Okay, so it's too lengthy. But anyway, let me just do it uh, here. So if I want to differentiate this, the way that I analyze the problem, I would say to myself, I have a function which is composed of three terms. This term minus this term plus this term. So I have three functions involved. Two of them subtracted, one of them are add, is added. So according to these rules, so this is a combination of all these three rules in one problem. So if I want to do it, let me just do it a step by step. The way that you have to learn to think. I will take the derivative of the first part minus the derivative of the second part plus the derivative of the last part. Which rule I am using? Rule number two and three. Yes, rule number two for addition, rule number three for subtraction. But now I go one more step. Which rule I need? I need the first rule. So this is a constant multiplied by a function. I took two out and concentrate on the derivative of that function. And then minus 3 goes out, x to power 2 prime. Let us keep it for the time being as it is, because there is nothing I can do about it unless just write the answer. So you see, rule, uh, so addition and subtraction, addition and subtraction. I don't know. This is called rule number one. I just You don't need to write these things, but in the future, if you want to read your notes, I want you to pay attention that you, we have done this. But now, if I ask you, what is the derivative of x5? You know the answer. What's the answer, everyone? What's the answer? 5x five five X to the 4. Four. And then you have minus 3. What is the answer? 2x. Two. Two what is the answer? Zero. Yes. Which rules I used? For these two, I rule I use this rule. This is not a rule, this is a formula. I use this formula. But for the last one, I use the first uh, formula. Yes? And then I would simplify. So differentiation is pin finished here. When the, there is no prime left, differentiation process is finalized. Simplification starts. So this becomes what? 10 x to the 4 minus 6 x. And I, what I expect you to do in exam, I want to do all these parts in your head. And you, this is very extremely simple. It's not complicated. So if I give you this in the exam, it's better to be able to write this immediately without doing But it doesn't mean. So the way that I do it, I think about all these processes, but I do them in my head and I jump to the conclusion. It doesn't mean that I just don't jump to the conclusion without understanding what I'm doing. It's important to realize that you are using all these three rules. Okay, so that is it. Let me uh, try to give you more examples. Um, the diversity of problems you can solve now is actually more than you might, you might expect. Yes? Okay, so for example, another example, number two. So let me write this. f of x is equal to the third root of x plus two second root of x minus one. 
So I want to differentiate this function. Of course, again, I analyze the problem the same way. I have the sum of two functions, subtraction of another function. But the point is that I also have to get rid of these third signs because the formula that I have, okay, this is good, by the way. If you have this in your memory, I can immediately use it for the middle one. If you don't have this in your memory, because this is not in the formula sheet, you have to redo those calculations I did for that one as well. So if you don't mind, let me use it, okay? So if I want to do it, I would do it like this. f prime of x is equal to the derivative of the first part. Okay, so let me do it like this. Because we know what is going to happen, I want to use the, this formula for this one. So don't, I will not change this. But this is not in my table. I have to change this. So what I do, I would write it like this. f of x equals to this i would write x to the power of one third using this formula up there yes Be of course i can also write this x to power one half but because i have this in my memory i want to use it so let me keep it like this and then minus one this is the first step i do so then i start differentiation so this becomes the first one derivative plus the second one derivative minus the third one derivative this I use this formula giving the rule of a to one third so one third goes down x to the power of one third minus one this two goes out and then I take the derivative of a square root of x and let me write, what is the derivative of 1 is 0. And I simplify this. 1 third minus 1 in my head, it becomes minus 2 thirds. Plus 2. What is the derivative of a square root of x? It is on the board. It becomes 1 over 2 square root of x. And I don't need to write minus 0. So differentiation process is finalized. Why? Because there are no primes left. But simplification starts. So what I do, I prefer to write it in the third sign as the original form. So I would write 1 over 3 x to the power of positive 2 third. But this 2 and that 2 are cancelled. And then I get plus 1 over square root of x. One more step. So let me write it here f prime of x I will write it in the third sign form again so it becomes 1 over 3 the third root of x to the power of 2 plus 1 over square root of x so this is the simplified version of the derivative of this function so you see that you are already able to differentiate different functions yes and now if you don't if you want to feel it you go here and use the definition. It is horrible. If you want to calculate the derivative of this function, even though it's not that complicated yet, using the crude model of the limit form, it becomes a very, very big mess. Is that clear? That's the derivative of this function. Let me give you more examples. What about this one? What do you think here? Uh, number three. Uh, let me write it like this. f of x is equal to uh, x plus 2 to the power of 2. I want to differentiate this function. So what I'm supposed to do? Can I immediately start the differentiation? No, because this form is absent here. Okay? I cannot use it. But what is the next thing that I can think about? Yes? Can expand. expand it. That's it. So this is, this is that you need to understand yourself. I expand it first. The first one to power two. Two times the first one times the second one. 
the second one to power two. Now let us do it quicker. Can you just do most part in your head? It's 2x plus 4. No. 2x plus? 2x plus 4. Because the derivative of this one is 2x. The derivative of 4x, 4 goes out. I differentiate x. But differentiation x is 1. 1 times 4 is 4. So try to learn this fast. And what is the derivative of 4? 0. Zero. So that's the answer. Let me give you another example. Number four, uh, what, what about this? f of x is equal to 3x squared multiplied by x squared minus 2 to the power of 2. You have expanded it in that first pro problem. Yes. If you just apply the rule immediately. This is a coincidence. It's a coincidence. Yes, that's a coincidence. So you cannot apply that rule. Uh, for example, if I change this one, uh, so for example, if you, if I have given you this, that's a good question, by the way. If you want to blindly use the rule here, you will get this answer, yes? But if you expand that, it becomes x to the fourth plus two times the first one times the second one, which is what? 4x squared plus four. And if I ask you to differentiate this one, it becomes 4x cubed, and then this becomes what? 8x. And this answer and that answer are not the same. So that was a coincidence here. And that is also another unfortunate thing, because the most important rule in differentiation is called the chain rule. And that's a miracle that we have the chain rule. The universe is kind to us, probably. Otherwise, we have to, there is no way. We have to mainly do this derivative all over again from scratch. Yes, but that was a coincidence and that was a good question. Might be I was a little bit careless. I should have given you x2. In x2 you feel the difference, but in x you don't feel the difference because both of them give the same result. Yes. Okay, so let me give you this example. I want to wait, by the way, for you so that you can solve it. Yeah, please do it. You will not learn this course unless you practice a lot. Yeah, you do it, and then before I do it, I put it in GeoGebra to learn that one as well, then we can compare. Okay, did it work or not? Yeah, so let me, let me go to GeoGebra first. I want to show you this as well. It's good to learn. Let me put this function in GeoGebra, uh, this function number, uh, this function f of x we had before. I want to put this in GeoGebra. And I have my answer here on the board to see how GeoGebra will actually give me the answer here. Uh, okay, so I will go here. And then you learn that you write f of x is equal to. And then for the third root, as Rasmus mentioned, we go to this f of x. The third root is not here. You can use x, uh, fraction powers yourself by typing it in. But it's better to go to this one. And then I will choose probably this one. Let us see how it works. That's very fine. So I put three there and probably a bit tab. No, that was not correct. Yeah, I need to go here now anyway. Then I punch X. And then I go out and then I have plus two. Let me use the product rule as uh, sorry, plus two, plus two, and then start multiplying it by square root of X. So square root of x, I can go back because this is more used. It is here. And then I go minus 1. This is the function. And this is, the, of course, the graph of the function, which is not relevant for us right now. And then here, I type, do you remember, f prime, as I just typed. Yeah, it's already there. But you, even you don't need to bother to put this x. So the answer is here. So this is a little bit, I don't know why... <laughs> So, because this is the correct answer, I can feel it, but GeoGebra sometimes decide to put decimal negative powers, sometimes they follow the, I mean, this answer is exactly, and then it doesn't bother even to cancel these twos. Okay, so I, I don't know, is, is there any way, my, if I go to CASView, so let me go to CASView, might be that is better for this calculation. So what happens if I go to CASView and I try to do the same thing? 
Uh, let me write f of x again here. Okay, is equal to, and then the third root of x, and then I go out plus 2 multiplied by square root of x, and then minus 1. Okay, so if I enter, this is just my function. This I don't understand what GeoGebra is doing. Yes, it is giving me the function back, but let me write f prime of x. Yeah, this is more reasonable. And so, so none of them is my answer uh, exactly, but this is more reasonable than the previous one. And uh, uh, so let me see that if my answer is also the same thing. Do you, do you see that? Uh, because usually I told you that this is also good to teach you in mathematics people prefer not having third signs in the denominator so they try to change the form this is not compulsory by the way just listen to see that it's good to learn so I would write this and I rescale it my goal is to get rid of the third sign so this is a little bit of a strange rescaling but I hope that if you understand the logic, it is not hard to understand it because I want to get rid of the third sign, the, the third root sign. So I multiply it by this. What will happen? The numerators multiplied gives me this, and the denominators multiplied. I have three here, but this one multiplied by that one, it becomes the third root of x cubed. But the third root of x cubed is just simply x. So if you go back. To GeoGebra, you see that if I take this one, third root of x divided by 3x, that is exactly what you see here on the board. And the other one is also the same, 3x, 3 square root of x divided by 3x. 3s are gone, and I am left with the square root of x over x. So if I come back to the board, can you tell me how can I get rid of third sign? I want you to see, did you learn? I want to get rid of the third sign and the denominator. How should I rescale it? With itself so I multiply it by itself and then of course I have to multiply this one one times that is what and this times that is so this is why I think this is more reliable so if you want to do derivatives it's better to switch to cast view because it gives a reason more reasonable answer there yes The third of three, yes, x squared. No, because the goal, so if I have the third root of x to the power of 4, I cannot get rid of the third sign. Yes, because this, this can be written as the third root x to the power of 3, x. Only this part will go out, but still the third root is left. Okay, the only way that I can get rid of the third sign is to make it three. I already have two of them here, so I only need one more. So this is this is the motivation why I multiply by one. If, for example, if I have this one and I want to get rid of this, you can tell me what should I multiply now? Because one over x squared, not one over, both of them. Yes. So the goal is to make this power powerful enough to be able to get rid of the, that root sign. For example, if I have this scenario, I want to get rid of this one. What should I multiply? The tenth root of x to 3. Yes? Because I want to get rid of that third sign. Of course, I will not be able to get rid of third sign everywhere. I get rid of it. In the denominator, the price I pay, I have it in the numerator. Okay? But this is more common if you get rid of third signs in the denominator. Because if I want to add expressions with these third signs as denominators, it would be hard to take the common denominator. But if I write them in a way that I do not have any third signs in the denominator, then it would be easier for me to take the common denominator. Yes? 
Okay, so this is the one. Let me also test the this question before I answer it. So I would I have to probably to change the name of the function because if I write the f, it will be get confused. You can test these ideas at home. So I write g of x is equal to three x to the power of two, and then I come down and then I have x to the power of two minus no uh, minus sign should be here minus two. So this is my input. Oh, I made a mistake. There's a power of two here as well. Okay, that's good. Okay. But of course, if I press this one, this I get, this is exactly the function g of x, then I go back and I type g prime of x, and then I execute it. For some reason, it doesn't work again. <laughs> I don't understand you, Jibra. Do you see what I have done wrong? I'm trying to do the exact same thing, and for me it doesn't even work the first time. And I'm in exactly the same view, in exactly the same version. And oh. it just says f prime of x is equal to f prime of x, just like it's a three to g of x. Oh, so let me now. So this is very disturbing, isn't it? Yeah. Because sometimes it works. If I just come back here and it doesn't let me to paste control V. No, it pasted there. So how can I come here? <laughs> It's not working. It sort of works when you, if you remove that g prime of x line, yes, uh, it could go there to the line where it has g prime of x. Yes, here. Yeah. Multiplication sign. No, 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 no. Just, just remove that. Remove that. And in the bar at the top, the f prime of x. Now, go back to the line where you are. Hopper? Yeah, at the top, there's a bunch of buttons. Um, here, here you mean, okay. But, but you, but you need to make sure that you're on the line under the function, so line four. <laughs> no, it's sometimes, you are right. So might be I shouldn't type. When I use the cast view, I have to go here. Yeah? Uh, this is very important. Thread, please try to think at home. So because we need to come to some unified idea, how do we do this? So I see the derivative symbol here in cast view, not here. So when I let me, and by the way, this is the answer. And that's the correct answer. I know how GeoGebra did it. GeoGebra is using the product rule, but you haven't studied the product rule yet. So it doesn't mean that you cannot solve it. This is the reason that I uh, brought this up. Okay, but can I expand that? How can I expand this then? Uh, expand should be somewhere here. What of, this is expand, yes? No? Yes, expansion. I don't know so what I did. It wrote expand, yes? So this one is expansion. So when I expansion, I got this. This is the answer should, you should got. You should have get uh, here. Have you got this answer? No? So that is a bad news. So let us go back here to see why you haven't done that. No, but uh, we need to practice a little bit, by the way, that is important for you. Because you need to find a reliable way of using GeoGebra. No, but it was a very good, I don't know, might be because of these updates, or we don't read the manual, <laughs> we want to guess what is going on. Anyway, if I want to do this, the first one GeoGebra did, it used the product rule. Why is that? Because this is the product of two functions, which is not part of your lesson. So you don't know how to do it in that way. But still you can do it. How? By expanding this. So this becomes what? 3x squared multiplied. I expand this part. It becomes x to power 4, 2 times the first one times the second one. And then the second one to power 2. Still, we don't know how to do it because still it's a product. So I have to continue and expand it even more. So this becomes what? Uh, 3 x to the power of 6 minus 12 x to the power of 4 plus 12 x to the power of 2. This is after expansion. Uh, so this answer that you see is gx itself. And it is written g of x. Yes. Now I want to take the derivative. So I take f prime. I get this one. 
and then I want to expand this I don't know how should I do that I expand that one uh, very strange things happen but let me just take the derivative here so f prime of x is equal to this is 18 x to the power of 5 minus 48 x to power 3 plus 24 x this is definitely the correct answer another thing that i don't like i don't know how should i get rid of them how do you delete these lines i don't know ah delete row two let me just delete everything okay so let me just type it once more to make sure that so i would write g of x equals to and i would put the function three times x to the power of two times no times there not not there <laughs> g of x is equal to 3 times x to the power of 2 and then times again brackets x to the power of 2 minus 2 and then to the power of 2. So I finish typing and then before pressing any button let me just press F prime. This is definitely the correct answer. I'm I'm sure about it. Okay, but then I want to expand the answer. Do you do you have any idea how to expand? Just press expand. Do you think it will work? Yes, it worked. Yes. So this is the process you need to learn. Probably it's better to use these buttons as you said. And this answer that you see here is exactly the one that I got here. Yes. Then you expand that four. So the first answer was also correct, but the GeoGebra doesn't know that we don't know the rule. So it's using the product rule. But at this level, you have to expand and then calculate. Yes. I really recommend you to try to do some of the exercises in the book, both by hand and by GeoGebra, because it is extremely important to know what you are doing in the exam. Yes. Here I can correct you, but you don't know in the exam. You are going to trust this application so you need to know how to work with it very well yes uh, are we going to be using GeoGebra in the upcoming tests and i i don't i haven't decided yet might be i will do that let us see how it goes uh, but it's a definite yes for the national test yes that one part mm -hmm. there's not a definite yes you can use either GeoGebra or you you need to have a graphical calculator with it. but that is definitely a yes yeah, I was searching like uh, old uh, national tests, like uh, math 3 CE tests, and it said there's like several parts, and one of them was like an oral part. That you have no, to... oral part was obsolete from the two years back. The oral part, yeah, there is no oral part for the time being. It depends what they decide for the next coming. Oh, they have not decided yet? Uh, might be it is on the exam. I can check it out, but I don't think you don't, don't need to be worried about the oral part. Okay, any questions? Uh, okay, I, I will continue this lesson with more examples. I have already updated the Google Classroom. I will add some more to it and then you can work on it until the next week. Okay, any questions? This is extremely uh, serious lesson. It's different. I hope that you can feel it. Even it's different from chapter one. So if you don't practice, you will get lost easily. So pl please keep practicing. Thank you very much.